Hi there, my name is Janet Simmons and welcome to AEDT 1120, Foundations of Digital Teaching and Learning Technologies. This is the first video of the course and the purpose of this video is to introduce you to the course layout. Distance education can sometimes seem a bit, well, impersonal. So I'll start off with a brief introduction of myself and then we'll look at the five important aspects of the course that you'll see running through each module. We'll also review the video clips and how they're used in the course. I'll introduce you to analysis questions. Next, I'll introduce you to the course activities and expectations. And I'll also speak a bit about the course assignments. And then we'll wrap up with a look at the synthesis questions. I live in both Toronto and Victoria, BC, where I'm working on my PhD in education. My work history includes working at a Toronto area college for eight years and also as an instructional designer for a private IT education company where I created online, self-paced, and in-class instruction. In 2013, I began my studies at the University of Victoria where I research educational technology. I'm always happy to talk with you about my background and area of research, so feel free to ask me questions during our weekly tutorials. All video clips contain three elements that will help you organize the material for the course. Each video begins with analysis questions. These questions will help you focus on the key areas you should think about while you watch the video. The content of the course will give you rudimentary information. Support videos or readings will introduce you to ideas and principles and offer in-depth content. Reviewing these resources is imperative to gain the insights needed to be successful with understanding digital technologies for education. Finally, each video will end with synthesis questions. These questions are designed to help you connect key ideas and content of the video and bring together the concepts and ideas from each week's readings and the videos. Many of these questions will be asked in our weekly tutorial sessions, so please come prepared to discuss them. Let's talk about the analysis questions next. These questions are to be read prior to viewing the remainder of the video. The purpose of these questions is to be an advanced organizer for your thinking and to help you focus on initial areas of the content to ponder. Please discuss your thoughts with others in the tutorials and also in the course discussion forum. There are three analysis questions for this video. Now, it's often easy just to think about the answers to these questions but I find it so much easier to write down my answers. This helps me process the information and refine my answers. I encourage you to open up the document titled Questions in this week's module and refer to them as you watch the video. The purpose of this course is to introduce you to the technologies that underlie digital teaching and learning. We'll look at the history of computing, the technological underpinnings of digital technologies such as binary codes, and also we'll look at programming concepts and early uses of computing in support of learning and computer assisted instruction. We'll also examine the impact of major technological developments in digital learning technologies. There are five learning outcomes for this course. In the first three, you'll become familiar with the history of computing and its impact on modern computing. The next two learning outcomes speak to your ability to analyze, explain, identify, and use various technologies in adult education settings and contexts. The course description and course outcomes are in the course syllabus. This course will take approximately 36 hours of your time to complete. There are 12 sessions in the course. Each week you'll be expected to devote three hours to the course. There are weekly video clips for you to watch, plus the hour-long mandatory weekly tutorial sessions in Adobe Connect, and finally, online activities such as the discussion forum and other self-directed activities. Again, this is taken from the course syllabus. As you can see, the first two sessions will provide you with information needed to succeed in the course. You'll get started with your first PBL scenario and begin exploring digital technologies. In the middle weeks, which are weeks three through 10, You'll be working on your two PBL scenarios and increase your knowledge and application of digital technologies used in adult education. The final two weeks are your final presentations. You'll also tie up any loose ends and will provide a synthesis of the course material. This chart gives you an idea of what is required for you to successfully complete the course. Working in your group's PBL scenario will take up the bulk of the work. The subtasks give you a clear idea of what is expected. Here's my advice to you. Creating videos is a lot of fun, 
But for it to be successful, you'll need to put in time and effort into pre-production and post-production. This means plan it well, shoot it, and then edit it. There are a number of resources you'll use throughout the course. This includes text, which for the most part you'll find on the internet. Links to videos, blogs, and research articles, and book chapters will be posted weekly in our Blackboard site. Additionally, you'll be responsible for finding your own resources using the UOIT library and search engines. Finally, you'll use a variety of digital tools such as Google Docs, video and presentation software tools, and social networking sites. Students often ask me, what do I need to do to be successful in the course? I've identified six things that must be done. First, view all the video clips and answer every analysis and synthesis question in each video. Participate in the weekly tutorial sessions using both audio and video. Post in the discussion board on a weekly basis. Totally engage in your PBL scenarios. The more you put in, the more you'll learn and feel comfortable with learning through PBLs and using new types of digital technologies. As I mentioned earlier, the design and production of the video requires a lot of effort. You are required to have an end product that looks, sounds, and has the feel of a professional production. Finally, the group assignments require you to fill out peer assessments. We'll talk more about that in an upcoming tutorial. It's time now to wrap up with the synthesis questions, but first I'll explain how these work. First, watch the video. The questions are in each video and also posted in each week in a document titled Questions. You may want to read these ahead of time. Next, answer the questions. And finally, talk about your thoughts in the weekly tutorial and post in the discussion forum. The synthesis questions are the foundations for the tutorial sessions. The four synthesis questions for this video focus on how you will benefit from taking this course. Examine the course's learning objectives, learning outcomes, activities, and think about why this structure was chosen and how it benefits you as a learner. Now, don't forget to review the course syllabus, which you'll find in the course documents folder in the Blackboard site. You'll find more information about the activities, expectations, due dates, and other information that will help you get the most out of the course. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.